Hello. <laughs> so that was my uh, totally budget attempt at an intro. Um, the music, if you liked it, was from Omnis, who's um, one of our awesome fans who's written like four or five different tracks um, just because he likes Stonehearth, which is really cool. Um, you can find it on our Discourse if you're interested. Um, is my mic working? I hope it is. How do I sound, guys, on stream? It's quiet. It's too quiet. How about that? Is that better? Yep, that's better. Alright, we're, we're rocking it. If I do something wrong, just tell me in all caps, and I'll see it eventually. Okay, so, our mission today is to do the Dragon Welt, but before I get to that, let's just like sort of give an update of where we are. Um, the Kickstarter has been rocking. Um, thank you guys for your continued support. We recently sent a preview build to uh, a lot of YouTube channels and that really helped us out. So if you're listening and you were one of the YouTubers who previewed Stoneheart, thank you so much. Um, you made a big difference and we've rocketed past the co-op stretch goal and we're looking to hit more. Um, yeah, we're almost at, I don't know if we're almost at 500k, but we're like well past 450 and we're accelerating towards the uh, the end of the Kickstarter. So that's super exciting. Um, okay, so what are you guys looking at? Well, on stream you're looking at uh, the pets that we have earned so far. So from, and some other stuff that I'll explain in a bit. So from uh, left to right, here's the kitten. And our uh, beta backers, I think it's the beta backers, maybe it's the settlers. Um, I can't remember which tier, sorry. Get this kitten, or a choice of a dog, right? So, uh, and then here's uh, the puppy, right? Uh, and some backers have backed for, oh wait, let's fix him. He needs a tail. Sorry, let's fix that right away. I feel bad with him not having a tail. Okay, great. So a lot of our backers will get a kitten or a puppy. And some of you have backed, uh, I think it's the $50 level that gets you both. And then because we hit one of our stretch goals, everybody gets a mammoth, like everybody. Everybody who backs us on Kickstarter will get this cute little baby mammoth. And then in our previous um, live streams, you saw me animating this little guy, and then you saw Tony actually put him in the game. Hmm. You guys are saying I'm still not loud enough, really? That would be bad. Here. That's as close as I can put this thing to my face without it blowing out. All right, everybody says I'm fine. Jeffers says I'm fine, and Jeffers is the universal source of truth. So that's it. Um, OK, so these are the pets that we've got so far. And the reason why I have them on screen now is because I want to make sure that my dragon well fits in with the rest of them, um, which, I mean, I'm doing all the art. so. Uh, it'll be like kind of a similar style, but I really want to make sure that they're synergistic. Um, so then I've got like some other things that I'm drawing inspiration from. This is a bat that you guys are seeing, I think, for the first time, right? So bats are probably going to be in the game. Um, and he's super stylized, like a lot of our art. Um, and then we've got uh, this boar model. And the only reason why I'm including him is because he's my favorite of like the critters that we've done. For a lot of reasons, I just really like this guy. I think he really, he's simple, um, and I, you know, he just reads bore, you know, without being, like, too realistic, super iconic. So I just want him on screen just to, like, let me draw an inspiration. Okay, so whatever, that's enough of that, let's go. Um, so I want something that is about the same size as the dog. I mean, picking the right voxel resolution is always tricky for me. Um, and usually where I screw up a model and have to go back and rework, it's because I chose the wrong resolution to begin with. So let's go with something that's, I don't know, like just we're picking numbers, kind, not just out of a hat, but kind of out of a hat. So 20 by 20 by 20 ought to give me enough room. Yeah, okay. So that's, so he'll be about the same resolution as the puppy. That looks pretty good. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so you guys, if you saw my first modeling, oh wait, this is wrong. So I want them to be an odd number so that I have that one voxel row down the middle to work with. So we're going to go 21, oops, but I need to stretch it. 
to be 21 by 21 by 21. Okay. So if you guys have seen me model before, you sort of know the way I work. Um, I like to start with sort of a big cube. And let's make it not white, just so it's not, it's a little easier on the eyes. And define my center line. Okay. And now I'm just going to like start cutting off pieces of material. And like the dragon whelp we're going for is kind of like he's a little baby dragon, so it's not like he walks on all fours or anything. He's going to kind of float around on wings. Um, that'll be cool because it'll be like a flying pet. You know, we don't have any of those yet. So he'll be like, that'll be his thing. He's like a flying pet and kind of buzzes around, maybe like, um, I don't know, like a big, big hummingbird. So I'm just trying to like get a silhouette. Right, just like super basic. That's not right. Maybe like that. And that's, this is like really, really basic. You guys hear, someone hears a high pitched squeal? Is my mic bad? Huh. Yeah, extraneous says it looks like a dragon already. You're way too flattering. Okay, whatever. Uh, uh, and let's do the trick where we mirror. I have to figure out which way to mirror. There's that way. You guys, see, okay, so I got, I'm getting conflicting advice. I hear, like, some people say, like, move the mic to your nose because then I don't have to hear you breathing, and other people go, say, the mouth. So we're just going to go, like, sort of the midpoint between the two. Boom. Yeah, you guys are really picky. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Perfect, okay. Right, compromise has gotten the job done. Um, I was going to do something. Oh, yeah, answer some questions. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Wow, I can actually, like, okay, I don't know if I can mess with this Google Doc, but I'm going to just answer questions. Who gets a dragon whelp? The answer is everyone gets a dragon whelp. Um, I should say all Kickstarter backers get a dragon whelp. Um, anyone who backs for any level, well, I should say, like, yeah, any level backer will get the dragon whelp. Um, that's different from the kitten and the puppy, where you had to back at a specific level. Both the mammoth and the, whatchamacallit, Dragon Whelp, which we're working on now, um, goes to all backers. Uh, uh, if this game gets greenlit before release, will you offer the ability to purchase entry into the beta? Uh, I am having difficulty parsing that question, but um, I can tell you that uh, if you don't have a chance to back us now, there will be a way to, to purchase the beta when it's available. Um, and green light for us is kind of this mysterious black box. We're not really sure how it works. Um, and if we do get green lit, of course, we'll, we'll learn more and we'll figure out what's going on there. Um, so I'm not really prepared to answer any questions about green light. I just don't know enough about it at this point. Um, okay. I think I'm going to have, I'm going to make a fundamental decision here, which is like the eye span. I think the head is going to be kind of the key thing to this dragon. You know, getting the head right is going to be pretty important. And that eye span makes him just look kind of... It just looks wrong. He looks too adult. I feel like he should have, like, a wider eye, sp eye span, which makes him look kind of more innocent. But here's the problem, right? If I go for, like... I can, like, make the head a lot bigger to get that wider eye span. Like, I can do that. And I can do that. Oops. Okay, now his head is, like, big, which is cool. And maybe this will work, but my gut tells me it won't, right? Like that, maybe... No, that might work. I was going to say it was going to be too wide, but it might work. Um, let's go with that. So, I mean, where I was going with this is I might have to, like, deviate from the norm and make him an even number of voxels wide, because I only have a... I have very limited choices. Like his eye span could be one, which was totally wrong, or it could be three, which is what we've got now, which looks all right. I thought it would look a lot worse. Or it could be two, but if it's two, then he's an even number of uh, voxels wide, and that's bad. Yeah, he kind of looks like a chicken. But that's okay, because he's just a work in progress. Why do you have to be so mean? He's just a baby. 
Uh, okay, so like I'm not making just like with the magma smith, I'm not making color choices at this point. Anytime I use a color, it's just to sort of distinguish one area from uh, from another. Like here, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with his horns. Like you should probably have stubby little horns, not like big long horns. And I'm not really happy with that, but let's just give an indication that there'll be a horn somewhere. Um, okay, so how do I like? Can I skip that question? Ooh, I could. Great. So another question. Considering the season's goal has been reached, will weather be included too? Ooh, weather. I don't know. Um, I like the idea of weather, even if it's just cosmetic. Um, you know, just the idea that, like, you know, it's raining now. Well, that's interesting. Um, or, like, having wind that blows things around just ambiently looks pretty cool. Um, so I would like to include weather. I can't promise it, but I would like to. Um, Okay, so now we're doing like a A-B test. Like, uh, this guy has like two, his eye span is two, right? And this guy has an eye span of three. Let's do a snap poll. If you like, put either two or three in chat for either the, the eye span that's two wide or three wide. Almost everybody likes two, and I like two as well. So this guy's gonna be kind of a, uh, he's gonna break from the norm. Oh, so Tony was photo bombing you with our wombat. He shows up in the Kickstarter video too. And actually, I'm gonna put him like you can't see him, but I can see him. I like I like the look of that wombat. I like the shape of his head, and so we're gonna use him as inspiration. Um, Tony got that wombat in Australia, so he's like an authentic, real wombat, even though he stops. He's he's totally real. Um. Yeah, okay, so I like this much better. I'm getting a much better vibe out of this by changing the eye span, so you guys made a good decision. All right, okay. And then he's probably got, like, like nostrils, right? I mean, he's got kind of this dragony head, which is kind of like kind of like a cross between a crocodile and a lizard or something. I don't know if that's, like, the right place for them. Let's, let's try doing like this. Okay, whatever, close enough. I don't know if that's right either, but we'll get back to it. Okay, and um, one thing that took me a while to learn, just as kind of like a self-taught modeler, is to edit. Um, so like dragons are like these super, can be super complicated with like, you know, scales and spines and all this stuff. And you can say that about anything. Um, I mean, any like organism has lots of different parts to it. Um, and where I go wrong, it's usually because I'm trying to model too much and trying to make it too too accurate. So I really need to pick, especially at such a small resolution, on like what what am I going to emphasize, um, which means what am I not going to put in. And for this guy, I want his emphasis to be his head, his wings, and his tail, because I think that's what's going to make him unique and stand out from um, not only the other pets because he's got like a serpentine head, um, but also like other flying things, right? Like, you know, for instance, the dragon whelp, when he's like way far away on the screen, maybe like that big on the screen, has to look really different from the bat, right? So that you don't, so that they don't kind of look all the same. Um, so that's what I'm going to focus on, his head, his tail, and his wings. And that means that I'm going to de-emphasize um, things like his body and like his... And maybe I'll give him big claws too. Um, so I'm not going to be too concerned to make sure that his body is um, anatomically correct or even that it makes sense. Like his body is pretty much just going to be this kind of like oblong set of, set of cubes. Um, because if I worry about too much, it's just going to look kind of boring. Um, and we want this guy to have lots of character, right? Okay, so I'm kind of trying to figure out what's going on with his front legs. All right, uh, needs more coggles. You guys want coggles on everything. You're so predictable. So predictable. All right, so we're just gonna use this color as sort of a distinguishing factor, right? So, um, of course, like dragons have, I don't even know what this is called, but they have this sort of belly texture, which is different from the texture of their bodies. Um, and that's kind of the indication of that. Wow, he's already looking like something. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure if it's dragon yet, but he's looking like something. Um, <laughs> bazooka. 
You guys are in the wrong genre now. So let's give them just kind of an indication of like all four legs, right? And we don't want to have these be too big because, I mean, he's going to fly, right? So you you want to kind of see, and I'm, I'm drawing them in kind of like the posture that I want them to fly in, at, whatever the right grammar for that is, right? So he's, you know, if you're thinking about it, he's kind of buzzing around, his, his legs, these are kind of his hands, kind of, these are horrible, but they'll get better, um, right? So maybe like, these are like, these are like his claws, right? Maybe he just has two, because if I, I can't put three, right? So it's, it's two or, or just a giant wedge, but that looks like nothing. It looks like a horse or something, right? So it would be like that. Um, maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe it should be like this. That's probably better, because when I flip it, it's going to... I need a gap there, right? So here's the flip trick. Right, <laughs> he looks like absolutely nothing there, right? But okay, we turn him in there. Right, so that's not that's not bad. That's kind of the right posture that I want. Um, give him floaty claws like human hands, but he's not human. Use presentation view on the moderator. Where's presentation view? Where's that button? I think it, mm, I don't know. It says I can like skip stuff. I'm just going to like skip questions because that works for me. Right next to popular questions. This moderated thing is cool, but like I don't really have... Oh, presentation view. Look at that. What is this thing? I've never seen this thing before. It's like a Google thing. Oh, this is awesome. Use the arrow keys to advance through the questions. Oh, I love this thing. Wow, I've never seen this before. Whoever came up with this is genius. Um, will you still collect money through the year and apply them to your stretch goals? Um, mm, undecided. This is uh, my off-the-cuff response, which is that uh, that's kind of dicey. Uh, for the Kickstarter, we're really collecting money to like um, enable us to uh, staff up and deliver the game to you guys. I, I mean, we, we are funded which is awesome, we're happy to be funded, so that goal has been achieved. Um, so like what's taking money after that, like throughout the year when we don't have product to give you guys? My off-the-cuff response is it, it, it's a little dicey. It seems like something that we have to think about. Um, so I don't know, it's, it, it's a tricky question. Um, but we are thinking about it. Uh, Will co-op be a separate mode, or will players be able to have their friends drop in and out of current worlds? Um, that's a good question. Drop in, drop out would be awesome. Um, and almost a requirement, right? Because otherwise, I mean, what happens? You have to have everyone online at exactly the same time when you start the game. That would be very bad. Um, so, I mean, the the goal behind co-op is, of course, that you're in a shared environment, and, and um, people can play together without having lots of draconian requirements. So we're going to try to make that as easy and fun as possible. This is going remarkably well. I thought that I was going to really struggle with this guy. I mean, he's not where I want him yet, but like, like let's, okay, now he looks really horrible. So it wasn't going as well as I thought. So let's compare him like to the dog, the puppy. I think it was probably a mistake to pose him like this. Maybe it should just be a pure arrow, just to be iconic will be offset to the right by half a voxel so it's centered when we do animation. And here he is from the top. So I'm kind of accomplishing my goal. Like if you look at this guy, he's like, he's all head and tail, right? And that's what I wanted to emphasize, head, tail, and wings. So the only thing next to do, in fact, maybe his body is too big right now, but we can, we can play. Like I want his head to pop out, so maybe we do that, right? Maybe that his high shoulders was a bad idea, or a bad idea. Um, all right, wings. If you haven't noticed by now, I've been procrastinating on the wings. I'm going to do the wings in a different color um, because I have a feeling they're going to have to be a different color to distinguish them from the from the body, um, so it doesn't end up as like a giant mass of pixels. When you're dealing with like super low res um, voxels or pixels. 
This is a trick I learned from pixel art. It can really help. Uh-oh, did the stream die? No, I guess it's my fault. Um, it can really help to use color to distinguish things, like um, like Mario's face in the original Super Mario's. This is like the classic trick that everybody probably knows. Is like um, he has a mustache. Why does he have a mustache? Because those blocks of bluish pixels below his nose, like. Um, pop out the features of his face because there are like four blue pixels there. It defines like the nose and defines his lip and mouth region. So I, you know, the same trick works with voxels. We're like here, the front of the kitten's face is just a flat plane, but because we, we, um, I don't know cats, so I don't know what like this area is called below his like the white area for the rest of them. Um, we can define his face that way. Um, so I think I have to do the same thing with the. Well, I'm definitely doing it like here where his chest is. You can't see my mouse. Here where his chest is, right? And I think I'm going to have to do the same thing with the wings, just make them a slightly different shade or maybe an entirely different color um, to distinguish them. And I, I need to resize. So I swore I'd never do it again, but now I'm doing it. Uh, there. That gives them plenty of space for wings. And my OCD makes me always put them... Oops at the origin. I don't know why. Right, so now he's back at the origin. Uh, okay. Alright, so we have some decisions to make about these wings. Like, how much are we gonna... Let's look at our reference, which is the bat. If we look at the bat from the top, these are like... These are actually kind of bad. I'm not sure if they're bad or not. I think they're bad, because they're made almost entirely of diagonal lines. Right, so... I guess they don't look bad from here. But I like that like the the webbing is like this webbing is like up one from the wing. It kind of makes it stand out when you look around in three dimensions. It doesn't just look like 2D art that's been like slapped into 3D. It has some three dimensionality to it. So I'm gonna steal that idea. Um from myself. Is it theft? I don't know. We'll see. Um What do you say in chat? It looks kind of dragony. What, the wings? The bat wings look dragony? What looks dragony? Clarify yourself. <laughs> Who said something about cyan? I missed it. Repeat the point about cyan. Oh yeah, no, like the pixie wings? I mean, that's great for a pixie, but this is not a pixie. This is a dragon, and he's going to have real wings. You want some clarification on pizza for Thursday? What do you want to know about pizza, Jeffers? I mean, there will be pizza. And I'm sorry you can't have any, but you can buy your own pizza. No? Pepperoni pizza? No, it's not going to be a pepperoni. Well, I don't know. Maybe, like, I'm not going to get pepperoni pizza. I don't like pepperoni pizza. That's just me. Alright, so I was procrastinating and really not enjoying the concept, the idea of making these wings, but they're not turning out too badly. Like, that's not bad for a silhouette. Maybe they should be even bigger, but maybe not. But one thing I know is that they should be up from the body, because, like, he's going to have, like, he's going to have, like, these big, like, this is all fictional anatomy, right? But it's still grounded in real anatomy, so he's going to have to have some kind of sort of beefy shoulder joint thing to support these wings, right? They wouldn't just be lying flat on his back in the same way that, like, you have these shoulder blades that can sort of pop out from your back if you, like, flexed them. Um, bigger? Are you kidding me? Look at this. This is huge. This is huge. Big? All right, we're going bigger. We're going bigger. There. That is ridiculously large. Now that's obsolete. You'll get your bigger wings, but he's not going to have goggles. So it's a compromise. That's pretty big. They were big enough before, you say. I don't know. Hold on. Let's let's figure it out. First, let's let's mirror him real fast. We're just going to get a, a lightning read on this to see like if they're What's the, I mean, those are pretty big. Now remember, they're going to bend, right? They're not just going to flap around like, um, like say, a bird's wings, where they pretty much stay flat. I mean, they can have a bend in them, 
and, and curl when they're flopping around. Those are pretty big. Yeah, those are pretty big. Those are too big. Because you you, you want to see like you want to see like that face. Look at that face, right? That's where all the character is. That in in his posture when he's flying around. You know you don't want him to look like this this thing that's just like all wing. The wings are there to enhance the character. They are not the character itself. Um, so let's take it down a little bit. But you know he can still have like sizable wings because he is. He is a dragon. It's not a pixie. All right. So I'm just trying to get the silhouette right. And I'm not gonna do like what I did over here with the bat. I did the bat like probably four months ago. I don't like the way the 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 bottom edge of these wings are all stair steppy. I don't think it's gonna read well. It might, but. I'm going to try, I'm, I'll try it both ways, and then I'll change the other one to whichever way I like best. For this one, I'm going to try to keep them flatter, which is not, not to say entirely flat, because it is like kind of web-based, or like a webbing. But I'm going to like do much less of that, and just give a slight indication. And then, of course, I like that idea of this popping up, so we're going to pop it up. And now it's time for color. And it's time for a question. Let's go back to producer mode. Man, I got too many windows to juggle. Uh, down arrow. Thanks, Google. How will new citizens spawn? Do they appear migrate based on the amenities? Or are they produced by existing citizens? <laughs> produced by existing citizens. That, think of that. Um, if not, the latter is that within the ability of an AMOD. So um, I'll answer the easy questions first. It, it will be trivial for you to spawn new citizens based on some rule. Like the hard part is not going to be um, spawning new citizens. That's super easy. It's going to be um, figuring out what the rule is and, and writing those mechanics. And that could be, you know, easier or a little more involved depending on how complicated those mechanics are. Um, I can only give you my personal opinion on this one. Um, and this is like super early thinking. So it's just take this like with a giant spoon cup full of salt. Um, I like the idea that uh, the the criteria for purchasing citizens should be like really really explicit like really clear um, like almost like um, you buy new citizens with food like literally slap down 100 food and then a new citizen walks up and says hey look I'm here to join you um, the reason why I like that is because um, I play a lot of StarCraft and I like the choice that you have in StarCraft of am I gonna make another worker um, so the choice in StarCraft is like, am I going to make another worker, which is going to make me give me a, a, a stronger economy um, like five minutes from now, um, but at the expense of not building, say, like, you know, a Marine or a Zealot, an army unit for defense or for offense, right? So it's a, it's, it turns out in StarCraft, like in the first like 10 minutes of the game or something, it's not that interesting of a choice because you almost always want to make a worker first. Um, you want to be greedy. Um, but... Um, it's an interesting choice uh, that you have to make right away between um, like economy versus defense or offense. And then the third, uh, I guess, leg of that triangle or tripod is tech, right? And tech for us would mean like craftable goods that improve your production or something. So we want to have a ch constant choice between economy, um, army and defense, and, and tech. Um, and a big part of the game is like choosing what's right for you at the time and sort of, you know, riding the edge between, well, it's, it's going to be a little risky to make this choice, but if, I, if it pays off, it'll pay off big time 10 minutes from now or an hour from now. Um, yeah, so if you have like, in the, okay, I guess this is unsaid. I hope you got the idea, but in Stonehearth economy, one of the major factors of economy is how many workers you have or how many people are in your town. The more people that are in your town, the more things you can do at once. Um, or the more of one thing you can do. Um, so that's why I like, personally, to have a really clear indication of these are the conditions that will let you boost your economy by getting another worker. That was a super long-winded answer, but it's also like a really interesting question um, for Stoneheart specifically and just in game design in general. It's nice to have, at least I like games, where there are like clear, meaningful choices. Um, 
and you, you're sort of put to the test. There's not an obvious right way to play the game. Um, okay, let's take a question from chat. His tail looks strange. I agree his tail looks strange. His tail looks strange for two reasons. Um, I want it to be smooth when it animates. Like if you remember the tentacles, in fact here, I'm going to do it. I'm going to load Cthulhu. First I'm going to save this. Um, uh oh, where did I put Cthulhu? I gotta find him. Hold on, it won't take long. But I didn't put him where I usually put things. Uh, Cthulhu. Okay, this might blow your mind. Like Cthulhu, it, it probably won't. But maybe like expand your mind. So Cthulhu, like unanimated, looks pretty darn poor. I mean, he just looks like sad and soggy, right? Um, and it's because. Uh, I wanted his tentacles and, and, and the different parts of them to be smooth, right? So they're ani they're they're modeled like here are the different parts that all animate. They're all here. Let me turn on the model view so it's more clear. There. So each piece is just like a, a, a two by two by two cube, right? Um, and it looks like like I said, soggy and, and horrible. But it doesn't really matter how it looks in the modeler. What matters is that now I have these smooth surfaces along the sides of the tentacles that will animate really well. Um, so the same thing is going to happen with this tail. Where like if you look at it now, it's just like stiff and weird and not very cool. Um, but I'm going to chop it up into different pieces and that'll give me a smooth continuous tail that should animate really well. Um, and like I said before, this uh, arrow cap on the end is offset because that's the only way I can model it in this tool. Um, when it animates, it's going to be pushed over to the right a half voxel, so it'll be centered. Um, okay. One more question from chat. Uh, this tail is not too thick. I don't think it's too thick. I think it's good. With vo I mean, this is we're we're buttoned up against the limit of voxel resolution, right? I could like make it one thick, but now it's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, it's too thin. That's too thin. I prefer this way. Um, can we name our towns? Um, yes, you can name your town. Um, when you start off, you will give your settlement a name. Um, and then, you know, maybe you can name other things. Maybe as you come across different um, regions of the world, like a big forest or something, maybe it has a default name, and then you can change that name if you really want to. I mean, why not? That that makes sense, right? Because it really is a game kind of about your guys exploring the world and what did the explorers do when they hit at least the western world? They just started naming everything, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's part of being explorers and settlers on a frontier. Um, Alright, let me take a question from the moderator. Will be we be able to direct the flows of bodies of water? Um, too early to say it would be awesome. Um, water in general is tricky um, and the trick there is, is doing the water in a way that um, is efficient and doesn't blow out your CPU. Um, so we haven't really taken a good look at water yet. We'd like to be able to do that but, but we don't know. Um, will pets mature and will there be breeding? The, the cosmetic pets Probably not. Our current thinking is is that for the cosmetic pets, we want, we don't want, we're nervous about giving them any abilities, including like the ability to grow up or fight or something like that. Because then, if we do that, it's almost like pay to win. Like your the you guys as Kickstarter backers will have a unique advantage over people who didn't get in from the Kickstarter, maybe just because they didn't know about us then. Um, and that kind of sucks. Um, so. Uh, but for the non-cosmetic pets, for like pets that you get through the animal trainer or that you um, capture out in the wild, um, potentially there will be like breeding and you can, I mean the whole point of the animal trainer class is that um, you, you grab animals from the wild and then you customize them, not customize them, but train them to give them, you know, abilities that are useful, like either uh, as beasts of burden in your town or potentially as, you know, for combat and stuff like that. Uh, I'm kind of screwing around with his head. I'm not. Sh this is probably a bad change. I like the the, the more elaborate horns. Um, I'm not sure. He looks maybe too mature when they're out like that. So I'm gonna like push him back in. And now we're going to choose. And maybe they're too big. We'll screw. We'll continue to mess around with it. Now we're gonna choose his color. Um, <coughs> 
Can modding add new animals and new animal breeding costumes? Yes, you can add new animals. Um, in fact, um, go back and watch uh, the live stream that Tony did last week where he added an animal, the mammoth, to the game. Um, and uh, the thing that you have to know about that stream is that uh, Tony was doing everything in the way that um, we do things now. Um, because like we are super familiar with the way the the engine works, and we don't we haven't written any, any tools yet, so he did a lot of handwriting of code and handwriting of data files. Um, we do want to have tools available for you guys to do that, so you don't have to like be a, an experienced scripter. Um, but you can see sort of what the process is at the lowest level, and yeah, that stuff is possible. All right, color time. I've heard two two suggestions for his color. One is like a sapphire blue. Let's move this over. Maybe like kind of like that. And another I heard like a midnight blue, kind of like that. This is your chance to spam. Green is not going to happen. Purple, black dragon, red tip. Mm, black is going to be tough. Midnight. Wow, you guys really want dark. Brighter blue, sapphire. Okay, it's definitely blue. It's definitely blue. I mean, he's like, remember, he's a baby, right? So do you want this midnight blue baby? Isn't that sinister? That's pretty sinister. I like sapphire. Sapphire, baby blue, red and green are too cliche, I agree. We're going to go with sapphire blue. And you midnight people may be right. You may be right, but if you're not, then then the midnight blue crew is going to laugh at you. That's way too blue. Um, I talked into my previous um, modeling deal stream that I personally try to avoid like super saturated colors like over here and the color square. What is this thing called? It must have a name. I guess this is a color cube that you look at one slice at a time. I try to avoid super saturated colors um, because I want to reserve those for like you know really really extra shiny things. If like everything is saturated then it's just kind of like a rainbow puking out of your monitor which could be awesome for some things, but it's not what we're going for for Stone Earth. So I'm going to try, and colors are relative, which took me a long time to, to sort of figure out, but they really are. Like, look at that blue. I'm going to put like a blue that's just like a little bit brighter, like next to it, right? And go bam, right? Now, well, okay, that's not a great example here. We can do like that. Like, that blue looks, looks kind of bright, right? But it really isn't. It's actually kind of a, oops, it's actually kind of a dingy blue, right? But because it's next to, an even darker blue, it, it pops, right? So you don't have to make everything super saturated and super bright. Um, give it earthy colors. No, it's a dragon. It, it's got to be like, I mean, you know, it's got to be chromatic or it's got to be like, um, you know, like a sapphire or gold or cyan. Cyan is pretty close to sapphire. It can't be like brown. Brown would be like maybe like an earth golem or something. I like the idea of a burnt brown, like a burnt orange. So I'm just going to like, whoops, that didn't work. Come on back. Like that, I think, is in the ballpark, but I'm going to try something else because I really like that idea of a burnt orange, almost like a like a bronze or a rust. And we're just going to try that just so that we can quickly see what it looks like. And if it's a bad idea, you guys will tell me right away that's a bad idea. It's too close to the puppy, right? I mean, I like this idea in general, but like imagine like you're the kind of guy who wants to turn on all your pets, right? You don't want like the brown pet and the gray pet and the reddish brown pet. Like, you know, you want them to have some variety. So we're going for variety, which means that we're going for I give it a party hat. We're going for uh we're going for this sort of sapphire cyan type dragon. And now we need to make up lore about it how this actually works. Wow, that was a mistake. Here, let's do that. I, I like giving him there. I like that. And now we need to pick like a complement for all of his horns and stuff. And the natural complement of blue is orange, and that is so cliche. So I'm going to like try to like, I mean, it works, but if I see blue and orange one more time. Um, so I'm going to like sort of do a riff and pick something that's orange-ish, but not like orange. And his eyes are a big issue now. Like, mm, can you give him golden eyes? Mm -hmm. Green eyes? What do you think? Pink. Pink eyes. You know what? You know what? I think you were joking. But that might work. That's not bad. 
Because it's almost like when he grows up, there'll be red, sinister, smoldering eyes. But right now, he's just a baby, so they're pink. No? No? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go gold. I like, I like the pink one, so I'm saving that. I'm saving that. Uh, but we can... Oh, I should save. We can try gold. Alright. Someone's texting me. Oh, it's my mom. No, it's not my mom. Okay. Um, yeah, I like the golden eyes. Purple is going to read pretty much the same as pink. It's just going to be a little darker, so that's not happening. All right, and let's let's do something about his wings. I said that I needed the wings to be a different color so that they would sort of pop out. Not pop out, but be distinguished from the rest of his body. Because you can see, like, here, like, I want these pixel voxels here to, to be, to imply, like, kind of a, a big muscular shoulder joint. Not muscular, but, you know, like a, a significant joint. But when it's all one color, it's just like, well, what is this? It's just like a mass of voxels. I don't understand what's going on, right? So by making these a different color, you know, I can distinguish. This is a different part of his body in a way that's not, like, you know, hitting you over the head with it. Um, and a lot of this is like subconscious, like how your how your eye reads things. Um, oh, great! And here we have a happy accident. Like I really, really like the way that we have this desaturated color in the same sort of color family. I don't know what the right term for that is. I'm sure it has a technical term, but I'm a self-trained artist. Um, but it's just too light, so I'm going to darken it up just a little bit. Yeah, and then just like I did on the bat wing. Like, I'm going to sort of lighten it out as it gets to the edge, sort of like the membrane is getting thinner. Right, so we'll use our original gray, like, on the edges there. And I'm going to simplify. I really don't... I think I overdid it. Remember when I talked about simplification and editing? I think I overdid it. Like, how many different purples are there? There's, like, one, two, three, four different purples on that wing. That's crazy. No, like, there are four different colors in that ear. It's just overdone. Um... But that's okay. I mean, we try stuff, and then we learn from our experiences. I won't even say mistakes. It's not necessarily a mistake, you know, and just learning different ways of doing things. Okay, so that doesn't make sense. It should be more like that. And the bottom side, okay, fine, fine. Like, I'm going to use a darker color on the bottom. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, not bad. All right, I'm going to take one question from the moderator and one question from chat. Um, can you manage multiple towns outposts at once? We don't make a distinguish, or probably, I mean, I, right now we don't distinguish between, like, this is a town and this is a town. So if you wanted to, like, build a building on the other side of the map, your guys would run to the other side of the map and build a building. So yeah, sure. Um, now maybe we can add, like, a little bit of infrastructure where, like, you can name your town, well we said you can name your town, but like if you build a building like from far enough away, we're smart and we say, okay, this must be a new town, what's the name of this town? And then you get sort of have that going on. But yeah, there's no like hard requirement that your buildings must be within like 200 meters of each other or something like that. I don't think that worked at all, but I'm going to leave it there because it looks like he has headphones and I think I can make something of that, out of that. Okay, question from chat. Can you name all your townsfolk? Um, Yes, uh, so you will be able to customize um, definitely your starting expedition. Um, you can give them whatever. It, it's it's going to kind of work like, I don't know how many of you guys play WoW, right? Or played WoW or practically any MMO, actually. Where, like, you get a starting character, and it's just, like, random. But if you want to, you can give them a unique name. You can change the way they look. Um, FTL, if you guys played that, I think works the same way. Um, it's been a little while since I played it. We're like, you get your starting crew, but if you want to change their name, and I'm not sure if FTL sports different models, but if you want to customize them, you totally can. And settlers will work the same way in Stonehearth. Uh, you can customize them. Okay. So I'm going to try something, which is to make like the parts that I'm emphasizing, his head, Remember his head, his wings, and his tail. He's all about head, wings, and tail. I'm going to make them a lighter color. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want them to... Wow, that's super subtle. But I like that color, so I'm going to go with it. I want, um, I want them to stand out from his body. 
and his body is almost just kind of like really this like hub that connects all that stuff. It is really not important because you're not going to be able to see it anyway when the wings are flapping around and his head is looking around. Um, which means that I want his body to be de-emphasized, so I'm going to like make it a darker color, which I'm hoping is going to like push it sort of into kind of the background, right? And it'll also help distinguish like the important areas of, of or the, the, the areas that I want your eye to go to. I don't want your eye like trying to figure out well, what's going on between like the articulation of his shoulder and his wing is, no, that's completely uninteresting. It should, the focus should be on his head um, and his tail, which will be super expressive, and then the fact that he's a winged, winged, winged creature. Um, yeah, and this, is also, this also helps me remember the Mario trick, right? This, by changing the color of the, the lower jaw, making it a darker color from the top of his head, first it implies that the that the, the upper jaw overlaps the lower jaw and that is in shadow. Um, and then it just distinguishes, oh yeah, okay, there's there are two pieces of his head in a way that if they were all the same color like that, you totally lose that aspect of it, right? So, yay, we did something right. Um, almost. Let's finish up what we started. All right, maybe I should carry this over to the legs. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, okay, question time. What kind of starting lore will there be? Where do our initial group of settlers come from? What did they do to bring them there? So we want to leave that kind of stuff. Okay, so when it comes to lore, we have two points of view, or two main, main I guess, yeah, points of view. So first, um, there is uh, a story behind the world. Um, for you to uncover if you want to. Um, this is a specific place where there are specific things going on and there's a reason why the bunny faction um, has developed as they have and all that stuff. If you don't care about that, you can ignore it. It's fine. But if, if you geek out on lore, that stuff is there for you to discover. Um, and that's kind of like the backdrop of the world. Now in that world, um, we want you to be able to make up your own stories, right? So like we're we're sort of sketching out broad sort of the the outline of the story which you get like you can start to get from um the stuff we put out about the three kingdoms right so um the like Raya's children are traitors and they're sort of all about um you know um i mean all right i'll just say it like like the ferengi from uh star trek but not like the ferengi yeah yeah not like the and the fact it's just in the sense that the ferengi were like like traitors and they were all about the haggling and the deal right that's the only sense that they're like the ferengi but they're like they're traitors right so they they're all about making like exploring new lands to make contact with people and, and further their trade empire right uh the ascendancy is sort of about you know pure settlement for the sake of settlement and expanding you know across the map and just like you know, going everywhere, almost kind of like, you know, the colonial settlers um, in the West. And then the um, the Northern Alliance are <laughs> are pure explorers, right? What happened? What did I do? Yeah, they're not Ferengi. I'm sorry I said Ferengi. It popped into my head and now I instantly regret it. But the Northern Alliance are like explorers, like, um, you know, they're kind of like the uh, the Vikings, right? And you definitely get that vibe. Where they're not about building empires, they're like sort of like they're the wanderers, okay? But that being said, that, that's all we've said about the Fins, um, or the Three Kingdoms. And when you pick, let's just assume we're going to get the Three Kingdoms because it's awesome to talk about. Um, when you pick one of those, like you're basically um, like an exploration party um, from that, from that set, but that doesn't mean that you have to like. Um, that that only provides kind of a starting point for for your personal motivation. Like, if you wanted to totally go against the, the the lore we provided and said, yeah, I'm in the ascendancy, but I'm I'm just I'm like, my guys are like a band of rebels, and we're out here just to like do our own thing, and and we don't care about the ascendancy. You can do that, and we want to give you the the opportunity to do that. So. Um, yeah, so we believe in lore and we believe in having like a specific place with like secrets to uncover, but at the same time, um, 
we want you to have the freedom to like we don't want to bind you to that and if you have your own awesome story that you want to tell in your head then then go for it and we don't want to limit you okay I'll take another question but first we have a major problem um, which is that like if you compare this guy to like our dog or kitten he's way too like he's way too colorful he's just super super saturated um, our starting colors that we picked were like just wrong um, which is not like it's not to say that he is ugly like he looks he looks okay he's a little confused but we can there are things we can clean up but when you put him next to these two he's like completely out of sorts it's like he's way too like lux like if he was like maybe like an end game epic like jeweled thing that would work but he's not he's like a he's in your starting camp and he's like your he's like your friend so we we need to adjust our palette to like you know make the stuff look like it all makes sense you think it's appropriate for a dragon i think it's appropriate for a dragon too um well kind of i think it's appropriate that the dragon has like something that that distinguishes him um like he's not a puppy he's a he's a dragon but like i think i can do that by um with like little pops of color like maybe uh, on his forehead right or maybe it's his eyes or or something but like all over it's just like you know i'm getting that feel of like you know sort of the monitors puking rainbows at me um i think that's a meme but yeah so right so i'm just cooling him down and and because he was so so saturated i mean it wasn't even that saturated but my by my standards he was like really saturated like it didn't, i couldn't add a pop like i'm gonna leave his forehead alone right and see where that takes us because i think it's interesting that like he's got this like kind of not glowing but brighter part of his head and it's like well, why is that like is that glowing like is that where like like his magic comes from or whatever you know whatever it's just and then like i'll even amplify it a little bit right so like right so to me like that is more interesting right because now he's got this little this little crest on his head and that's neat and um he's still like sapphire okay maybe like he's too light probably let's do this no that's too much we can do this my computer keeps beeping i'm sure like someone's urgently trying to contact me and like they're pissed off that I'm streaming and not responding to them, but sorry, I don't know where the beep's coming from. I think it's Skype. I hate Skype. It never works for me. It always seems to break at the wrong time. I don't really hate Skype, but I use Skype. Skype is a scapegoat. It's a convenient scapegoat. Okay. I like that. No, he looks cross-eyed. Let's try doing it the other way. I mean, sometimes I just mess around. Like, what if I did that? What if I did that? Yeah, that works. All right, sorry, questions. Jackknife, what are you so excited about? What's the capital ES for? I need to know. You're not telling me. Skype go. <laughs> jetpacks, jetpacks, jetpacks. Okay, so his wing, like, now that I've cooled him off, like, he's just too cool all over. So I want to give him some contrast, so I'm going to darken up the inside of his wing by, like, a lot. Like that. Yeah, yeah. That was a good decision. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to give him, like, I'm going to give him the... Oh, that's why. I keep flipping it, and that's why the tail keeps... <laughs> What? I'm not going to bother. I'll fix the tail at the very end because I'm going to have to flip him eventually. I'm going to give him the same like pop of color on his on his um on his tail as I did his head because now when I do this it gives like two kind of like little flash points and you'll be able to see the interplay of those as his tail is whipping around at least I hope you know maybe it won't work out but we'll see. Oh save. Thanks guys. Give him spikes on the side of his tail. Well, that's not a bad idea. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but we're going to try it. And of course, if I'm giving spikes on the side of his tail, they're going to be like from this crest color, right? 
That's not bad. Like, if we did that, now it's starting to look like a spine or something, which is gross. But that's not bad. I like that. Yeah, good idea. Sorry, whoever said that, I forgot already. And, like, maybe we can do this, right? Maybe, like, these bone things coming out is, is the wrong idea. Like, maybe we can do that, right? That's kind of neat, right? Now he's... No, I like to do the other way. That's better. The reason why I click save is because I don't trust the save hotkey. Like control S, did I really hit it or did I accidentally hit like control D or did like S go down 90% of the way and it didn't really save? So like when I go like file, save, I know like 100% that it saved. I'm OCD. Um, okay, so now like I'm just, I mean at this point the guy is kind of like, he's like 80% and it's just a matter of like, you know, looking at him and saying, well, what's the worst part about him? What's, like, my least favorite part of the model? Um, and then fixing it, and then I keep doing that over and over and over again, and then pretty soon, like, there's nothing that's really horrible, and I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess he's pretty much done now. Um, so, right now, the worst part of the model for me is that his wings are just kind of, like, are very blah. They're, like, really blah. Like, I don't know if this... They almost look, like... They almost look mechanical, so I, this is probably a bad idea. I like that on the bat, but I don't like it for some reason on this guy. Maybe because his wings are bigger. So, and this should extend out a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I like it here because... Oh, uh, you can't see my mouse. I like this ridge that I'm going to erase. <laughs> uh, because it, it sort of like... Oops. It's consistent with this idea of like a big joint there. Um, so I'm going to leave that, but I'll make it a little smaller. This is a... Eh, let's do that. All right. Come here. Come here. There. Yeah. So now, and then maybe add one voxel there. Yeah. So now, yeah, his wing looks more like it's kind of attached to his body and not just hanging out. And then I'm going to make this spine a lighter color so that it pops a little bit. And maybe make them all light. Yeah. Let's make them all lighter colors there. All right, that's a little better. Yeah, that's a little better. Maybe we should do that. No, that's going to get lost. Okay, questions. Um, does food make workers work more quickly? Um, to be decided. Um, food is an interesting subject. Um, like, just any ordinary food? Probably not because it's almost like your your workers have to eat anyway or they're going to die. So it's like you have a choice between dying and having a bonus, which is like not much of a choice. Of course, you'll always have the bonus because if you don't have the bonus, you, you're dead. Um, but, you know, we will certainly have um, like extra good food that is maybe harder to get um, that will um, give you bonuses. Um, and not only that, but we want there to be a reason to do things like build beds. Let's do something with the bottom of his feet, because he needs, like, something. That might be too dark, but we're going to go with it. We're going to make a strong choice. Um, we want there to, reason to uh, for there to be a reason to build beds and build tables for your guys to sit and eat at and stuff like that. Um, so furniture will give bonuses as well. Like, um... We have to figure out what's the right psychological way to, to, to do it. Like, is it a bonus, or do you get a penalty if you don't build a bed? Like, what's the right way? It's kind of the same thing when it comes to gameplay, but it, your mind thinks of it differently. Um, so, like, if your guys sleep in a bed, let's say it's a bonus, they'll, like, work faster, like 2% faster or 5% faster the next day, right? So um, we are very concerned about putting the right motivation in your mind as a player. Um, and for people who are hardcore min-maxers, like me, to give you a real reason to build that stuff, right? Like, if, if beds don't do anything and my guys can sleep on the ground and be just fine, guess what? Like, I'm not going to build a bed <laughs> because I could use those resources to do something else. And that kind of sucks. So we want, um, we want there to be, like, a real gameplay reason for you to, to do things like get better food and build beds and tables and chairs and stuff like that. Um, okay, let me take a moderator question. 
Should I like reload this thing? I hope it sorts. Like, it seems to be sorting. So, I'm just gonna go top to bottom. Will individual be? Will individual settlers be innately adept or inept with various classes? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Um, my gut reaction, which is only my gut reaction, and I haven't talked to anybody else on this, so it could change once we have a powwow, is heck no, because um, then we're restricting your choice. Like, maybe you want, like, your blacksmith to be the guy with the epic beard, because it's just, like, it's cool, and blacksmiths all deserve epic beards. But if he's naturally a fisherman, and, like, some other dude is a blacksmith, well, that, you're, you're stuck. Either, like, you're going to make a suboptimal choice, and be stuck with the consequences, um, or you're going to make the optimal choice and just be sad because your epic beard is a fisherman and not a blacksmith like he was destined to be. Um, so we want, we don't want to restrict your choice like that. Um, so my gut reaction is no way. Like, you know, you you pick what what class these guys should be, and then maybe they like, and then they gain proficiency through you know gaining levels. Um, what are your future plans for Ocean Navy? Um, we are not even thinking about that yet. That is a big, big subject. Um, and uh, we'll get to it in time, but there's plenty of other stuff to worry about. And, and our goal right now is focus, especially as we come off the Kickstarter. It's just going to be about focus and um, get to that beta with the core features that all you guys are asking for, which is like, uh, building, crafting, customization, stuff like that. Uh, okay. Change your beard of blacksmithing, yeah. What's a spot? Oh, spots on the dragon? No, can't do it. Can't do it. Like, where would the spots go? There's no place for the spots to go, because I've intentionally made... I mean, he's a baby. I've made him as dense as I can, right? If you look at, like, the boar, there's really only a couple places for spots to go, and that's where I put them, right? Um, and sort of mottled skin and like dirt splotches or something that's, that's something that's pretty iconic about a boar like the difference between a boar and a, and a pig is probably like the boar has this rustic coat right so that's what makes him read as boar I don't see spots as a key defining characteristic of a dragon whelp so no sorry no no uh no spots That's cool. I like that. Hmm. This guy's looking kind of... He's looking kind of done. Not like done-done, because, I mean, like I said before, it takes me... I revisit modeling models a lot over and over and over and constantly refine them. But he's looking like... He's looking like 80%, which is certainly enough to, like, get him in the game and have him start flapping around. Like, this should be lighter... Missing a voxel there. Yeah, alright. He looks like he could take wing. That should be like that. Mm. Ooh, look. What if we did that? Got rid of that. Does that read more as dragony? I think it does. Yeah, that's good. Maybe we get rid of these. Put them there. Yeah. Hey, look. He's a dragon whelp. Oops. That's probably better, because he gets a better profile. Like, the profile here is a little bit screwed up. You can't really... that doesn't read as a horn. Maybe use that. Oops. Okay, question. Putting spikes lower... oh, yeah, that's funny. Um... Three talents equals grabbing stuff, exactly. Make the horns smaller. Ah, oh, that's a tough decision, man. Look. Alright, those pink eyes weren't going to work. Um, make the horns smaller. Alright, if we're going to do that, we're not going to, like, slightly change the horns. We're going to, like, go radically different. We're going to, like, really nuke them. I like the idea of smaller horns, like little sort of nubbins of horns. Um, but we're going to, like... If we're going to do it, we're going to go all the way. Alright, so first we're going to model like his head, just in the, without horns. Alright. Wow, oh, that's not bad. 
and then we'll add the horns. Let's make sure we get the right color because I like this. I like this color of horn. All right. The most extreme thing we could do is something like this. No. <laughs> uh, so we could try something like this. Like little tiny just nubs. Those probably look like ears. That's not bad. Bigger. That's not bad, man. Like this guy kind of looks like a ram. Like a ram with wings. Now that I'm comparing him to this one. I think I like it. Alright, hold on. realistically in low resolution voxels. It's like, what is this? If, I, if you didn't know it was a log, how many of you would think that this was like, you know, it's it's just bad. Oh, to the wolf, sorry. I'm getting distracted. Um, hey, did I save that whelp? Right. So here's the wolf I've got, right? This is the mounted wolf, or the wolf mount that you can see in the Kickstarter video, right? Uh, oh, it's been chopped up. Um, I like I like his stance. I like his attitude. I do not like his head. It's like too complicated. Um, wow, you guys like the wolf. Well, I mean, I I like I like the overall vibe of him. Like his stance is super awesome. I like that he's, you know, I actually um, was inspired by John Talbane. Who knows who John Talbane is? One in chat if you know John Talbane. Nobody knows. All right, so John Talbain is Darkstalkers character. Thank you. Finally, somebody. Um, and the Darkstalkers art is fantastic. And they have John Talbain when he's. It, you can see him briefly in wolf form at the start of each match, and he's this super exaggerated wolf with like a gigantic torso and super thin belly, and it's just like awesome. So that's where I sort of took inspiration for this wolf model. And he's pretty good. I like his stance. I like his attitude. I like the saddle, um, but his head needs a lot of work. It's just like. I like the nose, but that's about it. All right, so why was I showing you that? Oh yeah, because um, because someone, I'm sorry, your names just blow by so fast when I, in chat, thought that this head looked like a wolf. And maybe I should use that as a direction for fixing my wolf head, is make it much more square and boxy. But you wanted nostrils. and. I am inclined to agree with you. I think it makes him look less cute, but we're gonna go for it because it will make him look more dragony. Like, do they go there? Maybe they go there. No, those aren't nostrils. I mean, the, the obvious place is there, but what do you guys think? Is that an improvement? On top? Are you kidding? Uh, I I don't I I don't think so. I'm saving that color there. It's not gonna go there. Like 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 that. No way. <laughs> that's a disaster. <laughs> right? I mean, you could, like, do that. No, that's a disaster, too. Someone said darker. I mean, maybe that's the secret sauce. I mean, I, this is what I like about voxel modeling, by the way, is because we're really pushing the boundaries of, like... That's not bad, but it's still less cute. We're pushing the boundaries of what you can do, and that's what makes for interesting at least to me, interesting pixel art and interesting voxel art is when, you know, you, you get just the right arrangement of of uh, pixels and, and colors and values to, like, where something reads. You guys like it, huh? I think he looks way less cute that way. But I'm going to leave it and I'll sleep on it. And there's a 90% chance that those are not going to be in the game. But we'll see. Now make a red one. Uh, make a red one? No, I'm not gonna make a red one. It would just be like color swaps. That's not fun. I'm gonna make his. I'm gonna make his fangs like a brighter color, because right now it looks like he really needs to go to the dentist. And like sort of dirty claws make sense, but yeah, no, that's too bright. See, man, everything is relative. When I don't use bright colors all over the place, I don't have to use bright colors really anywhere for them to read as bright. No, this is this is horrible. This is all a, a tragic mistake. <laughs> there.
See, now he's cute. He's got to be cute. Like, look at the puppy. The puppy's so cute. He's got an enormous nose. Right? And he's fat. Right? So, yeah, he should have nostrils, but he doesn't. Yeah. Fire breath. Um, if if the dragon whelp does any breathing of fire, it's going to be cosmetic only. Um, like I was saying before, we don't want to give utility to these pets because then it's like you guys did a pay to win thing where because you knew about us and backed us early, which we are grateful for, um, but you shouldn't get a permanent advantage until the end of time over people who, who, who join later. So the, the pets will be cosmetic. Now maybe there'll be like other dragons that you can get that anybody can get through your your you know, your guile in the game and those kind of abilities. But the pets will be cosmetic. Make the horns a little bigger. Wow. You get okay, no no no. So I like these horns. I think these horns are perfect for this guy, but like I said, we can support variants. So if you want bigger horns, then you won't use the Sephiric Dragon. You'll use... Okay, fine. Let's just do it. Someone said recolor him. So this guy's going to be... Alright, let's pick a color. No, don't give me a color. Give me an element or something. What? What is this guy? Crimson is a color. I need, you can say ruby, but you can't say crimson -y. Fire, lava, a lava dragon, purple, poison, poison dragon, ruby, earth, fire, obsidian, wind, silver, purple, black and gold. Some of you guys cannot follow directions. Magma, lava, dude, everything is lava. Christmas, a Christmas dragon. <laughs> it's the Christmas dragon. Everybody's saying magma. Do you guys, I mean, we have, we already had the magma smith. You want a magma dragon? Are you serious? Burnt Brick. Burnt Brick wins, because that is close to magma, but not exactly magma. Whoever said that, you you are a winner. Goggle Dragon. <laughs> you guys are obsessed. Alright. Okay, so if he's Burnt Brick... So, it, like, if he was a magma dragon... Wow, now I'm conflicted. Now I really want to do a magma dragon. We're going with Burnt Brick put armor on him. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that would be hilarious, but we're not going to do it. Um, Alright. I'm just going to flip him around. He's going to have cool eyes. Alright. So this is, like, not particularly interesting. Well, maybe it'll be interesting. Um, we'll try to do things to distinguish him from his Sephiric cousin. Right? Like, we'll just really brighten up this part of him. And maybe, like, we'll go totally nuts with it. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but I tend to give people mohawks. Um, I don't know why. I just like mohawks, and that kind of reads to me as a mohawk. Um, okay. Boink, boink. Look at him, he's so cute. All right. Um... Those blue eyes are probably not going to stay. Um, it was kind of reflexive, but I'm not digging them. Yeah, so this burnt brick is kind of magma-y. It's not super magma-y, but it's like a little bit. Flood fill is your friend. Flood fills your friend. All right. I said I never did this, but I'm going to do it. Um, because I had to fill like five times just to change one color. And it's because as we step through this guy, like all those, wow, this is kind of gross. There. Why didn't that work? I think that this blue is screwing things up. No. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to join all the regions that, oh, that's why. Right. So watch, if I like join these regions, then flood fill can span across the whole thing. So like, I'm like deep in the middle of this guy. Um, right. Okay. So now that I've done that. Because this, this is the wrong red. It's too saturated. I, I tricked myself again and, and went for something too saturated. Now, if I go for something like that, I ought to be able to... Ah, oh, it didn't work. It almost worked. I got more of it, which is probably enough. It's fine. I'll just spam click. It's tail. It's tail. It makes my OCD cry. What's wrong with the tail? Okay, that's bad. This is bad. That's probably bad, too. What's wrong with the tail? It's, uh, that's not English. 
It looks like he's blushing. I know, it's cute. It's cute. He's a baby. All right, um, and let's try to... So the whole, the whole deal behind this guy is you guys like magma dragons, and I like the burnt brick, and we're going to do a compromise. Oops. And we're going to be like, maybe like his exterior is, is brick, right, but sort of on the inside, he's like burning or something. Uh, who's the last boss of the previous WoW expansion? That dude. Reminiscent of that. Blackwing. Maybe he's like... <laughs> maybe he's like somewhat related to... Or, you know, that kind of a vibe, which is not unique. Um, it's just awesome. So, we can go for that too. Um, maybe Deathwing, Deathwing. Yeah, not Blackwing. For shame. For shame. <laughs> Alright, and if that's the case, then these blue eyes... Uh, I had a feeling they were going to go, and this is confirmation. Those blue eyes just are not, not working. Boom. That's better. <laughs> Godzilla. No. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me about Godzilla. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, I'm feeling this. You know what, I like this guy better than the other guy now. I don't, I don't like to play favorites, but I'm, I'm playing favorites. This guy's bad. He's bad. Look at those wings. Maybe those are too bright. Those are too bright. I'll just use this color. Oops. Uh, uh, okay, now we have a decision, two decisions. First, we can go, yeah, <laughs> he's like all sad. Don't you love me? I love you, I just love him more. Um, we can go dark with these wings. We can go like dark and probably like whatever, stick with our palette. He's kind of monochromatic, mostly. We can go dark or we can go like super light. I kind of like dark. So that's one one option. Or we can go not literally this, but like light. No, that doesn't work. What was I thinking? It's crazy talk. There. That's the way to go. Darker mohawk? Really? I. You know what? I, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go the other way. See? That's, that's so badass. Right? It's like, all right. And then for the horns, maybe we go dark, right? Nope, that didn't work. What should we do for the horns? I mean, I like dark horns too, but like, okay, I, ju I just went overboard. But we can fix it. We can correct. Right, maybe we just do that. Yeah, that's better. Oh, I should probably answer some questions. Look, we forgot the side of his face. There. Um, two from the moderator and two from chat. Will there be gravity? I already answered that. Yes, there's gravity. Can someone fall off a roof? Can you shove enemies off a cliff to their doom? What is wrong with you? Can you destroy a bridge while it <laughs> RFM from Texas is a dark human being. Um, there will be gravity. I don't know about all this other stuff. Like, can someone fall off a roof? Wouldn't that be a bummer? When is that ever a good thing? Right? I mean... There will be gravity. Let's just leave it at that and move on. Um, will the world have borders and will it generate more? We do not ever want you to run into a single border running uh, in any direction, and that includes up. And we will try very hard to make sure that doesn't happen. How many players will co-op support? We have no idea. At least two. And probably less than a hundred. Um, you know, it four at least, eight maybe, sixteen. 32 is pushing, I don't know, we don't know. But the point is to play with your friends, and if you can only play with one, that sucks. Um, okay, that's two. But I already clicked on one, so... No, it's fine. Okay, so two from you guys. The back of his butt is still blue. No, it's not. But the underscore, the underside of his wings are blue. And we cannot have that. There's not a speck of blue on him. 
Uh, should we make his claws darker? I bet we should. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the deal. So you 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 guys just saw me take one model, all right, and basically do a palette swap of it. And it didn't take long. And it was like it wasn't hard. It was like all like artistic decisions that we made, right? So um, if I was not me and I was like you, or I was, um, you know, just someone who wanted a different kind of dragon in game. You could imagine like me taking the dragon that shipped with the game and doing that exact same thing. He's too dark. He needs more contrast. Um, and doing the exact same thing that, that we just did here, right? And then like packaging it up as a mod, right? Um, and then here's my here's my uh, brick magma dragon pet mod. And then boom, right? Now everybody gets another variant of the of the dragon, right? Um, which is the whole idea. Like it's like if you want something, you don't have to like beg us or just like hope that eventually it'll make it into the game. You know, you just put it in the game yourself and then you share it. And if other people like it, they download it. And then everybody's happy. Like literally everyone's happy. We're happy because you got what you wanted and we weren't the bottleneck. You're happy because, I mean, you got it in the first place and all your friends are happy because this thing just dropped out of the blue and they're like, oh, this is awesome. Thank you for sharing that with me. Um, that is the goal behind, or one of the goals behind Stonehearth in a nutshell. I think he overdid it on his body, but I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be too hard on myself because I haven't animated him yet. Like the, the body really is dark, but we're pretty sparse on voxels. And when like things are flapping around, um, you probably want that distinction. Whoever said that the mohawk was too bright and needed to be darker, and I disagreed with you, you were dead on the money. There. It's, well, I don't know if that's right either. But it doesn't matter. We're like so close. We're like... Okay, no, now look. Okay, so now we've got like two variants of the dragon. We've got like our sephiric dragon, and we've got our brick dragon, and I'm not really happy with the colors on the brick dragon, I'm really not. Um, but that's okay because I was never gonna be happy with them in the on the first go. Like I said, I revisit my work a lot. Um, that's it was probably too bright. It's not bad. Maybe his eyes should not be yellow. Maybe they should be more of an orangey glow, kind of like the embers deep in a fire. I don't know if that was too deep. Right, maybe he's a cyclops. Maybe, just maybe. Oops, wrong color. Oh, come on, why can't I pick this color? Thank you. Goggles! That's not bad. Actually, that's not bad in general. Hold on. Maybe his maybe his snout is too long. Let's let's try this. By the way, this happens to me a lot, where I'm just like screwing around and I'm like, wait a minute. What do you think? Is that better? Is that an improvement? Look at the sapphire one. This guy. Yeah, you're right. It's too square. Looks like a cat. All right. <coughs> Never mind. We tried. We tried, guys. Um, okay. Let me here. Watch this. This is gonna look crazy. It's got like insect eyes. No, that's horrible. Sorry. Forget I did that. Oh wait, maybe that's an. Maybe this is a way to, to get his nostrils. We were struggling with the nostrils before, remember? What if we did this? Because the nostrils should stick out above the snout, right? How's that? Now I have to wait. Ooh, yeah, see? It works, doesn't it? No. 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 Derpy? No, it's not derpy. Well, it, it's a little... 
Hold on. I believe in variations, so we're going to do it this way. Right? I mean, he's a different breed of dragon. Maybe he has a different shaped head. That's fair. Yeah, I'm making an executive decision. It's done. It's done. All right, so now we've got two variants of the dragon. And sort of, because they're so similar, I just have to animate one, and then it's easy to do palette swaps. You could think of the brick dragon as a palette swap of the sapphire dragon. So, yay. Okay, I mean... That's it. We're done. Mission accomplished. I can take a few more questions, and then I'm going to sign off. Um, and we'll see you guys Tuesday on the pizza party. Okay, so this is a lightning round. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can in like five minutes, and then that'll be an even two hours time to go. Okay, and I'll alternate between stream and the moderator thing. Um, will there be a goal or primary objective to reach in the game, or will it be pure sandbox? Um, we were talking about this actually earlier this week, and a big thing for us... Um, don't spam your questions until I'm like answering this one because I'm really like not really looking at chat, guys. Sorry. Um, a, a big um, priority for us is to give you motivation when you're playing the game. Um, like, uh, th what we don't want to have happen is we drop you in the game and you're, you're like exactly how the game works right now, and you're staring at five guys and you're like, "What do I do? Like, what do I do?" We want to like right away give you um, at least a hint about this is how the game works, this is what's important, this is how you get bigger and stronger. Um, and we have, I think, some interesting ways of doing that. Um, so it's definitely a sandbox game. Um, and it won't be as clear as, like, there's a primary objective, like there's the boss over there, eventually you have to kill him. Um, but we want to give you, like, clear motivation from the start of, like, just set the, fr the stage of, like, here's why you're here, um, and here's, you know, how to, how to progress. Okay, chat. Um, da, da, da. Will the game have its own launcher? Yes, it's going to have to have, well, it will have its own, like, auto-update mechanism, for sure. Now, and I guess that implies a launcher, so, fine, yes. In co-op, can we play as one group and share resources? Uh, I talked about co-op earlier. You can sift through the two hours of live stream to figure out that out, but, um, Sharing resources is cool and and is an important factor. Um, do you get the same advantages from pledging via PayPal and Kickstarter? Yes, they are exactly the same. The only reason why we have pledging from PayPal is because some people cannot use Amazon payments for one reason or another, but they're identical. Um, resource pools for special classes, mana, stamina, etc.? Probably. Um, it depends. I mean, we don't want the game to be too micro-heavy, so if you ever find yourself like managing like your wizard's mana pool, then we've gone in the wrong direction. So we have to figure it out. Um, mm -mm. Did Tom go by Tony and Tony by Tom in the Kickstarter video? No. Why would we do that? That's that's twisted. Um, okay, I'm gonna answer a few questions from the moderation channel. Can you customize the appearance of buildings as well? Yes. Yes. Right now. Um, Built every every house you draw it, as you can see from the YouTube videos, are the same. That is just where we are now. Eventually, you'll be able to choose the materials for uh, the walls, for the roof, different floor patterns, different shapes of roofs. Um, like if you want a, a roof with crenellations, or a roof that's flat, or a roof that's maybe even a dome. We'll have all different kinds of parts that you can choose, um, and then you'll be able to do things like paint your walls different colors and through crafting and stuff like that. So lots of customization options. Um, questions about water. Any questions about water is we don't know yet, sorry. Um, we'll be able to create buildings with specific functions, for example, defensive towers that fire arrows or windmills that convert wheat to flour. Um, the way that we think about buildings is that you don't build buildings with a specific purpose. Like you don't build a barracks or you don't build like a mill. Um, you build structures and you give them meaning by what you put in and on them, just like the real world, right? So you have a smith because you built a building and put an anvil and a forge in it. Um, so uh, you can think of it the same way. You have a defensive tower because you built a tower out of stone so it can't be burned down and you put like archers at the top or whatever. Um, so it's it's up to you to sort of 
build your town with building blocks. And that's why I like to say that, you know, your your city is almost like building it an engine, like a car engine in Stone Hearth, where you have all these pieces and it's up to you to put them together and and, and make it work the way you want it to work. Okay. Um, will there be fishing? Not initially, but fishing makes perfect sense. Um, well, when I say not initially, I mean it's it's we've, we have tons of ideas and we're putting all those ideas in the game first and fishing is not one of them, but fishing is a perfectly valid thing to expect in the game. And so, hmm? Okay, Tony just said he wants fishing, so now it's officially on the list of ideas that we have, which means that there's a slightly better chance it'll make it into the game. But we have we have lots of ideas, and the way to think about our release, even in for especially beta and, and eventually in September, is that's like the first cut of the game, um, which means it's going to have awesome, lots of awesome features and lots to do. But that doesn't mean we stop working on it on like September 30th, 2014. We're going to keep working on the game for as long as uh, there's an audience and as long as we can, you know, be, sustain it. Um, sailing and whaling, no. What mic do I have? This is, I don't know, it's a Steel Series headset, I'm pretty sure. Um, can you make a boat? Wow, all these water questions. Any water question, the answer is we don't know yet. We haven't really thought about water yet. We're, we're focused on mainland, above ground building, and then we'll move on to other things. Dynamic lights, sconces, magic lanterns for night. Yes, yes. You like um, in our prototype video and some of the screenshots, you can see lanterns on houses, and those are dynamic light sources um, that will have some use um, at nighttime. That's exactly right, Fighter Six One Nine. This is the Steel Series Siberia V Two Black and Gold Edition headset. Thanks. Um, how often will you do live streams? We're going to do a live stream. We promise we do a live stream at least once a week through the end of the Kickstarter. Unfortunately, the Kickstarter ends next week. Um, and then after that, we'll keep doing them, but we'll probably do them once every two weeks, or maybe once a month. I mean, I get a lot of these. I think you guys enjoy them, so we want to keep doing them. It's not like it's not like we go dark at the end of the Kickstarter. Um, so they're fun. We'll keep doing them. Um, no more stretch goals. <laughs> not no more stretch goals, but fishing is a stretch goal. No. We really have to take it easy on the stretch goals, because we want to make sure that we can hit them all. Um, we don't want to disappoint people by promising something and then not delivering it. Uh, okay. Three more minutes. What resources will be in the game, and how hard will resource management be? Um, you could probably predict most of the resources, certainly the common resources, just with common sense, knowing that you can chop down trees and get wood. So, like, stone is a resource. Um, you can plant crops, and those are a potential resource. Um, leather and pelts from animals, right? All the standard RPG crafting stuff will be our resources. Um, mining metal from the earth eventually. Um, and resource management is a big part of the game. And when I say that, when I say resource management, I mean you have a limited amount of each resource. You can only get it at a limited rate. Like the rate at which you get wood is proportional to like how far away your guys have to run to get more trees and how many guys you have. And so the resource management game is like choosing what to build and in what order. Right? So that goes back to the, the choice between you know, econ, army, and tech, aka crafted goods, right? So you're going to get, like, say, 100 units of wood in the first five minutes of the game. How do you want to spend it? Do you want to spend it upgrading farms? Do you want to spend it building tools so that you have more crafters? Do you want to spend it building, like, you know, wooden swords and bows and crossbows so you have a bigger army? You can't build it all. If you build it all, then you sort of, even that is a choice because it means that you're choosing to go equally in all directions. So the resource management game is like choosing what to build and when. Um, yeah. Okay, one more and then I'll take your stream questions and then it's time to go. Will combat be limited to your citizens? Swords, shields on the front lines, range crossbows with hides? Or will you have siege tools? If there are siege tools, will they only be raiding for other sites or can they be used for defense? Um, all of that is on the table. I mean, not just siege tools. You can imagine like traps you can imagine things like moats. You could even, if we're ambitious, imagine things like natural traps, like the guy from Texas, sorry, I forgot your nick, wanted to burn enemies when they were on a bridge, right? So maybe you build, like, you have a giant moat and you build a bridge with, like, one support, and when, like, a whole bunch of enemies are on it, you knock out the support and they fall on the moat. Maybe. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, so a couple more questions from chat, and then time to go until next time, until the pizza party next week. Disease. Yes, there will be disease, disease in the game. Um, and one of the things that we're most excited about is um, disaster scenarios. Like, Cthulhu is a disaster scenario, but we don't want all of them to be external. We want some of them to be internal, and disease is definitely one of them. Or if, like, you just have a dirty, dirty city, um, and you don't care that you have a dirty city, like, bad things can happen. And, you know, disease and plague is one of them. Uh, someone asked me to explain festivals. Um, so the big thing they will say about festivals is that they're mainly like a flavor type feature. Like we like the idea that the ant farm quality of the game where, you know, you watch people just kind of live out their lives and, and doing their thing. Um, and festivals are like that. There are some people who are concerned that like they're going to spend all their time like gathering materials so that you're dudes can have a festival for the harvest or for spring. Uh, it's not like that. It's more like if your people are happy and prosperous and it's the harvest and the harvest is particularly good, then on their own they're just going to like have a party, right? Um, and you can see them like prepare for the party and maybe it involves like whatever, you know, dancing or, or whatever else. And then it's like they have the party, it's awesome, and then everybody gets like some kind of like buff, like they work 10% faster because they're happier for the next like day or week, right? So it's really designed to be a perk. It's not something that you have to manage. It's like a reward that you get in terms of eye candy and in terms of like a buff because you did something great at a particular time. Um, how tall can you build a tower? How many floors? Um, I've been told by Tony that you can build a tower 2 billion units tall. That's the maximum. So I hope that's tall enough. Um, which is another way of saying that uh, we don't want to put invisible ceilings or invisible walls in the world. Um, you know, maybe there'll be like some practical limit where like um, if you try to build from wood, you can only build four stories and then something will fall over. If you build from from stone, you can build it higher or whatever. But yeah, there, there'll be no artificial invisible walls in the world. Um, someone linked an image. Once again, I hope this is safe for work. Oh, doctors. Yeah, there's there's a physician class that we've already revealed in our Kickstarter page. Mm -hmm. Will your workers have preferences? Like, Robert has to taste uh, has a taste for things made of gold, fears horses, antisocial. That's an interesting question. Um, in terms of, like, gameplay, it's kind of tough to do that in gameplay because we don't want this to be a game like The Sims where like you're kind of babysitting and monitoring your little guy's feelings. I mean The Sims is a great game but it's just not the kind of game we're making. Um, we want you to think of your guys as like hardy, independent, um, you know, they're settlers of course. They don't need to be babysat. Um, but then on the other hand, one thing that we've considered is exposing people's individual personalities and idiosyncrasies through like lore. Like one idea we had is that maybe everyone keeps a journal and there they write about how they had to do this thing, like they had to go like, um, whatever, like chop down a fir tree, but they're like allergic to pine needles and they were like, you know, and it could be this story about how it was a, an awful experience for them and they wish that they never had to do that again. And for people who like lore, you can like look at your little guy's journals, right, and see what they're writing about what they're doing. And that could be super awesome. And for people who don't like lore, you just never open the journal and you don't care. Um, so that would be fun to do if we could do it. Um, yeah, okay, one more question, and then I really have to go because it's like eight minutes past. Um, okay, it's got to be a good one. But it's got to be one that I can actually answer. Like, death is an open-ended question. I don't know. Um, we have lots of ideas, but they're just ideas at this point, so I don't want to comment. Uh, children, I talked about before. What other epic units will be there, like the Magma Smith version of range, etc.? Okay, that is that is the question. Um, so, um, we've thought about maybe, like, the Beastmaster being one of these epic units. Or he's kind of about like uh, almost like a the idea like a a safari hunter, right? Where they're these big boss level, not like Cthulhu size, but you know, still boss level beast wandering around. 
and the the Beastmaster, not the Beastmaster, sorry, the Big Game Hunter. Uh, the Big Game Hunter is about like you know going in and taking them down, and if if he does, then you get like some epic crafting materials, like some exotic bones or ivory or something, which is probably not PC, but whatever. Um, that'll help you craft. Um, and then we've we've we our current take on magic is that probably magic will be rare in the game. Um, it's not like there's magic around every corner, um, but it's kind of mysterious. So you can imagine like a wizard um, type unit being an epic unit where like you, you get one of them after a whole lot of effort and maybe he's like a little crazy and unpredictable. Um, uh, and we, we almost think of magic as almost like nuclear power, <laughs> right? Where you can do a lot of fantastic stuff, but um, the more you invest in it, the more likely it is that you're going to have a disastrous scenario. Um, so yeah, so we have ideas for, for epic units other than the Magma Smith. And um, where most of your units here, I'll show you one last thing. Um, save that. Uh, yeah, so I think I've showed this before, but this is, um, this is my scratch pad for all the different professions. You can see like heads and stuff, right? So like, uh, hey look, here's the carpenter. Oh, come on, man, too much scrolling. So here's the carpenter, here's the blacksmith. Um, here's the mason. Here's like, forget about that. That's like a wizard, but that's not the way but that's outdated. Like here's like the herbalist over here. Here woodsman, right? All these guys are um, have like their own outfits, but they're their own. Um, they're all sort of the same person in different outfits. Um, and then our idea for like comparing that, like let's take the carpenter and copy him, right? And then so most classes will be like this. And then we've got like the magma smith and probably the big game hunter, oh, I don't have to, and the wizard, who's like this totally other thing, right? So it's like the magma smith is not just going to be like, oh, take a blacksmith and like give him a, give him a glove, and then he's the magma smith. The magma smith and the, the big game hunter and these epic class classes are going to be like hard to get, and they're going to be like super epic, and they're going to be able to do awesome things. So they're kind of like the end game of, of the crafting part of the game. Um, right. So, okay, that's it. Uh, let's bring back the whelp just to review what we've done. So we've got two variants of this guy, and you can see sort of how they compare to the puppy and the kitten. And let's get them all in frame. Like these are the pets. These are the Stoneheart pets, at least for now, for release. Um, yay! Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, again, thank you for backing us. We've got like, yeah, if you if your question didn't get answered, check out the discourse, discourse.stonehearth.net. Thanks a lot for, uh, wow, I'm going to shorten your Nick Harvey for, um, for setting up that moderation queue. That was awesome. It made my life a lot easier. Um, and thanks, everyone, for backing us. And we've got one more week of kickstarting. Um, so we're excited um, both to, like, be funded at such a level and also to um, move from, like, you know, to, to really go heads down and, and get the game out. Um, and... Our last live stream in Kickstarterville will be next Tuesday, where we're ordering some pizza, and it'll just be an all-in-out Q&A. Um, we encourage you to buy your own pizza, or at least pretend that you have pizza, and tune in. Um, that's it. Yeah, Pizza Tuesday. It's the Pizza Party Virtual Tuesday to cap off the Kickstarter, which ends Wednesday night. Um, hope you enjoyed this live stream. We'll keep doing them. Um, that's all. Bye, guys.